Okay, everybody, looks like uh, Roberto Martinez is about ready. Can you all please take your seats and uh, let him get started. He's going to be talking about Kapow. I'm going to hit the button right now. All right, it's all you. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm here to, to speak about Kapow. Uh, let's begin. So first of all, there are two separate worlds. On the left, we have the, the network world, which inhabitants are web services, browsers, IoT devices, you name it. And they speak with several languages, but the main one is HTTP. The other world is the command line world. The citizens are the commands, files, file descriptors, and they communicate through pipes and redirections. So how we communicate these two worlds together? From the command line world to the network, it's very easy because we have a lot of very good tools like curl, wgate, HTTP, you name it. Those tools can perform HTTP requests to web services, for example, and output the responses to the cell and interact with them very easily. The other way around is more complicated because we have a lot of options, but none is very good. We have, for example, the, the CGA approach in which we have a CGA server that can receive a, an HTTP request and make some transformation. First of all, the CGA server uh, pollutes our uh, cell environment with HTTP data and predates the standard input and standard output uh, streams with HTTP data also. Uh, this is not my favorite approach because the commands that we are trying to interface with the network have to know uh, how to deal with the HTTP request. Another approach is the so-called generic adapter approach in which we uh, receive some HTTP request and our generic adapter make some specific transformation, which is, is particular to, to its implementation, and call a command um, with the data. This is very similar to the CG approach, but is particular to the, to the adapter that we are using. Another approach is to use a, a, a custom adapter. Maybe if we are, uh, if it's not possible to use a generic adapter because it's not suitable for a command, we can uh, use our favorite programming language and make a, um, an HTTP server. And when the server receives an HTTP request, it, it can uh, execute our command, uh, passing the data, um, you know. Everything is hunky-dory. But this has some limitation because the command that we are interfacing is not uh, part of the cell and it's very difficult to interact with other commands without um, modifying our custom adapter. The last one and the saddest one is uh, just give up and make a new implementation of our command with, a, with an HTTP interface. But you know, we are, we are losing uh, decades of, of experience in, in command line commands. So isn't there a better way to interface the network world and the command line world? Just, we, just there is, and I'm going to show you. So let's see some demos. So first, consider this scenario. We have an internal host that maybe is our database or a printer or some, something that, it, that is in an internal network. And we have uh, users on the internet that needs to know if the uh, device is up or if the device is down. How we do this? Any, any clue? So the first that came to mind is SSH into the external host that we have. I'm just ping the device, no? But this has some problems because 
we have to manage SSH accounts in the external host, and maybe it's not uh, very secure. Another way is using Kapow. Can you see this? So the first thing that we have to do is start the Kapow server. This enables an HTTP server in the, in the host. And now we have uh, this, this file, uh, pin.pow, that uh, is not as scary, it's just an SLS script in, in which we are using another Kapow subcommand, Kapow root, to instruct the Kapow server to add a, a HTTP endpoint um, that when called will uh, execute this cell script. In this cell script, we are just executing the ping command with, with just one ping to our server, internal server, and we are redirecting the output of the ping command to another Kapow uh, subcommand, which is the Kapow set command that interacts with the incoming request and set the response body to the data that is, uh, that is passed along. So we execute the, the, the script. Now Kapow knows how to deal with the, with the ping endpoint. And if we execute the, a curl, it just works. What can we do now? Well, we have a lot of tools in the, in the system to give more information to our users. So maybe it's time to make a nice API to let them inspect things that uh, they are not uh, uh, capable of. For example, which processes are running in, the, in our server, uh, or maybe what type of, of CPU we have. You know, anything that they need to know and they, don't, uh, they can't uh, know because they are uh, uh, in, a, in another uh, host. We execute the script again. And that's it. So what just happened? A Kapow server works like this. We have <clears throat> uh, the Kapow process, which have two interfaces. A public interface, which interacts with the user, and a uh, private interface that interacts with, with the cell. When a request from the user uh, arrives to the user interface, a cell process is spawned, and in that cell process, maybe a script is executing some Kapow set commands that interact with the, with the internal uh, data interface. This is interacting in real time with the HTTP request that came from the user, so in this example, Kapow set response body banana is setting a banana in the, in the user uh, response. Let's see another example. Kapow is also very useful for developers. I don't know if you have to work with Windows. I don't recommend it. But Kapow is also uh, available for Windows. And then here, using uh, Kapow for Windows uh, from Sequin, which is a bus implementation, but because uh, Kapow interacts with the cell, you don't have to uh, use it with bus. You can use it with the, with the Windows um, command line if you want to, but I don't recommend either. And here we are, we are creating a, a, an endpoint in the Kapow server to use the uh, Windows and antivirus uh, software that came with the, with the operating system to scan a, a user, the, a file that the user is uploading through a, a, a form. We are uh, storing the, use, the, sorry, the, the file. We are using the antivirus to scan it. We are formatting the output and finally um, giving an, uh, the output to the, to the um, HTTP response. So if we launch this, now Kapow is running, and now from my Linux environment, 
I can upload uh, you know, a, a, a clean executable. And the Compose server is using the antivirus, antivirus software to scan it. There's no threats. But if we use a, a virus, upload the virus, yay, it works. Finally, Kapow is very useful for security teams too. Because, for example, uh, if you have a network with um, um, sensitive data, you don't want to give access to that network to uh, maybe to auditors or pen tester in some situation. So Kapow can be very useful to uh, convert or transform the pen tester tools to APIs that can be deployed inside that, uh, those sensitive networks and use it from, from the outside. In this example, I'm using Kapow to create an API that uses the TCP DAM uh, software to scan uh, the network of my, of my laptop, sorry, to, to sniff the packets from the network of my laptop, and create a stream, uh, HTTP stream that can be used um, somewhere else. I'm using sudo here because I'm lazy and I'm not it's properly configured. Okay. So now the server is ready and we can use for another host a simple curl and a pipe with a words arc. You know, and if we use something from the internet, here we are making a, a sniffing a network through an HTTP API. So finally, what's the Kapow approach? The Kapow approach is sitting in, sitting in between those two worlds and speaking perfect HTTP uh, with the network world and speaking perfect cell with, this, with the command line world. This way, we can interact more seamlessly. Kapow is distributed, uh, first of all, it's an open source project. It's distributed at a single static binary. So you can uh, start without any um, dependencies. It's multi-platform. We distribute it for Linux, Windows, and Mac. And it's, it's available for, for several architectures. It's well documented and it's, it's tested. But we need uh, your help because we need, we need users. Uh, so please, if you like what you've seen, try Kapow. Uh, give us a star on GitHub, please. Share with a friend or with uh, somebody that maybe like it. And join us. We need uh, said users, developers, and, and so on. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs>